Okay, so we have a quorum though, right? Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay, then I think we should go ahead, it being already 6.32, and there being a quorum, I'll call the meeting to order and ask for the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, Chairperson Richard, or uh, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Um, Vice Chairperson Cancel. Here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner uh, Charbutton Springfield. I can see you. You're muted. Here. I see that you're here. Thank you. And Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. And Commissioner Jones. Here. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, everyone except for um, Commissioner Richards. Yes, Commissioner Richards. And did you hear that she was later? Uh, she's uh -huh. in the process of logging on. <laughs> oh. Okay, then I guess the first item there under new business is the presentation by Gary DePace. I'm looking for Gary here. I, there he I'm, is. Hey, how you doing? I'm Hi doing there. good. Um, hello, all. I, I think you hopefully you've had enough time to breeze through the uh, many pages of the budget that we have. Um, this covers all the housing authorities um, programs from July 1st of 2023 through June 30th of 2024. Um, we did do a training a while ago um, for anyone to have attended to get the highlights of what the state uh, was offering and giving for us for, for um, additional resources for the year. Uh, I, I will give you a brief synopsis of that. Um, we got a 7% increase to the ANUEL, but we also received an additional amount per unit because the state um, did have additional appropriations by the legislature of 90,049. Um, so our ANUEL, annual non-utility expense level, increased um, fairly substantial compared to what we've had in the past. It's finally, um, I think we're reaching something that has been a 10 year um, process to try to get the funding for our state programs up to at least what the HUD programs have been funding. Um, and so those additional resources based upon um, the, pro, you know, the, the meetings that uh, took place with your executive director and staff, um, Sharon and Jack particularly, uh, we put this budget package together and came up with um, a proposal that really will uh, be fine for the upcoming year. Um, I, I guess we can go right to the bottom lines of each program to show the operating reserves in terms of where we stand. Um, the operating reserve for the 400 program ended at $1,037,837, which is on one of the pages, probably about seventh page in. Um, we're, anticip we're anticipating um, if we spent every bit of the resources of the budget that we would take 26,558 out of those reserves to fund the budget and we would be at 1,011,279. That's 56% of the maximum which is right within the guidelines. If you always remember, I always used to talk about 35% being a minimum, obviously 70% being a maximum. We don't really want to be too much over 70%, um, although that's not bad being over 70%. It just means that we probably wouldn't, we would have to use those resources before getting any additional type of grants. So 56% is a really good, um, healthy level to put our state program at. Um, one of the major items that we're, that's being done is we are replacing the 2007 cargo van. That's, a, that's an extraordinary item and is listed as a capitalized item. We're estimating at, at $55,000. And of course, we still um, budget for appliances. We've got $30,000 budgeted for appliances. Uh, we constantly are replacing stoves and refrigerators. Gary, could you just help us again? Just to, um, um, I think I'm looking at the same page as you. 
But yep. my uh, document, it's on page seven, and that's called the cal calculation, calculation of the of uh, reserve. reserve. Yes. Right, yes. right. And and so folks can kind of follow along with you as you bring out those okay. highlights. And, and that, Thanks. And that, that shows the activity. It shows a maximum reserve on the top and a minimum reserve, which are the, the minimum and maximum. And then we get into exactly where we were last year. That's where we went from 1,112,919 to June 30th of 2023, which is 1,037,837. And then the proposed budget is a 26,558 coming out of reserve, leaving us at 56%. And of course, that's yeah. that's fifty six percent is ex if we spend it, every dollar that we have, um, and usually what happens is we underspend the budget. Um, and again, we monitor our spending of the ANUEL monthly, so we make sure that we're not overspending. And if we're overspending, it means we're um, we've got to either do a budget revision or to look at these reserves um, to utilize that for. Um, our 689 program, um, the one thing I can see on that, and I know Kara and I have talked and, and Sharon, is we look very closely at the rent we charge to our 689 um, folks. I mean, th those are vendor, uh, vendor attached. And so we're looking at reserves there. It, they've been dropping every year we're utilizing reserves which is why the only thing we can do on that mm -hmm. is look to the revenue source and that's the contracts that we have for those um those pr programs Kara, do you want to touch base on those a little bit sure gary um i met with the uh agencies that have those respective units and um, I'm going to be, I've already renegotiated uh, the rents. Um, they're going up considerably uh, based on some numerous factors uh, like trash and lawn care and snow removal um, and, uh, you know, them paying their portion of, of essentially the salaries for us to accomplish that. And so um, uh, I haven't had a moment to breathe. Otherwise, I would have executed the leases already. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I need to get that done, and I will be making it a, a priority um, so that uh, you know, in this fiscal year that we, we're talking about today, you'll see the increases there. Yep, um, that's one thing on the six eighty nine that I'm seeing, Kara, is that we kind of have to look at that as we're renewing those leases. Um, and some of the other authorities have found that they go back to the basic and, you know, make them start charging and paying the utility costs, which that would uh, really yeah. cut back. I think that it, it it's I, literally going up by almost $2,500 based on the new state guidelines that they released in last October. And, you know, I did a, 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 a calculation based on, you know, man hours and who does it and cost for the, you know, trash, you know, they're supposed to be doing it, but we're doing it. So they should pay for it. And they've agreed verbally to all those terms. Um, I'm okay, sorry. That's, that's good. Right off. So we're, we're, we're talking about $13,000 a year. Uh, I mean, a, a month in revenue versus what it is right now. Okay, that's that's good. That will take care of the, the issue that I'm seeing because we're just seeing those reserve levels at the 689 program going down. But yeah. uh, obviously that will replenish yeah. those. Um, just a MRP quick clarification. Quick clarification. I know that no. just um, it'd be help. I know what we talked about the state programs there, the 400. And just to be clear, is the 689 the um, growth read and the... Or, uh, do you want to clarify that for me, please? So the 689 properties are um, are McDonald, uh, not McDonald, sorry, McColgan, Bridge Street. It's all the units that have either DMH or, um, you know, like at Tobin, there's a traumatic brain injury, uh, you know, uh, unit. Um, so it's any unit associated with, you know, Department of Mental Health or um, TBI or, you know, any of that. So okay. put it like a commercial right. lease. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Help. That helps. Thanks. Um, 
Okay, and our MRVP, which is the Mass Rental Voucher Program, which is a very yep. small program. I mean, we only really have 10 units in there. That just subsidizes a few of the programs, uh, units that we have. Um, and that's kind of in and out. That particular account, um, we tap into the reserves a little bit because the admin fee that we get, which is $50 per unit to it run, that hasn't changed now for the last... I think four years, um, there've been a lot of talk about increasing that uh, admin fee. And if they do, that will take care of it. There is no minimum or maximum reserve. Um, our current reserve is at $5,419. Um, the budgets in front of you proposes to take 1,290 out, uh, still leaving the reserve at 4,129. And that's a program that we monitor, we monitor all the time to make sure that uh, we're never going to go below that. Um, but we're currently um, within the guidelines to be at that. Of course, our federal program, we are in good shape. Um, one of the things that we talked about with Sharon and Kara and Jack was that there was rumors coming around that um, HUD was going to start looking at our reserve levels in our federal programs. And if we're, Congress was saying that possibly they might want to be looking at a recapture. Um, a recapture is something that was tried probably, I think, 15 years ago. Uh, that's the one where Northampton actually part was part of a class action lawsuit and fought the federal government. They ended up um, Winning that, that was with, that was with National NARO, um, which is why we recouped uh, about 200 and some odd thousand dollars in back subsidy that HUD originally said they wouldn't allow, which is why we also, we have still have that special project fund um, and that we have maintained and we still have and is there in case there's emergencies or something does come up. Um, if you remember, we did tap that special purpose a few years ago to supplement, <clears throat> excuse me, our Section 8 reserve. This current budget does not utilize any of those funds. Um, they are just, they're just staying back and I think they're basically just growing with interest. But because of the, the, um, there was this potential or talking that Congress was looking and saying that maybe they would what we, what we made sure we did was we put in the budget a proposal to get the reserves down um, if they so needed. And that was in the extraordinary maintenance side for Florence Heights to supplement the siding project, um, which is being funded from our capital budget. Um, Kara, I don't know if you wanna talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, what, we, what we did was um, we essentially, if the legislation uh, passes that um, they're going to recoup the money, if um, you already have a, an approved budget with a line item that's utilizing funds, then they won't take it. So as a precautionary me measure, um, you know, we have um, Florence Heights uh, in the capital plan to um, replace the siding. The peeling paint looks awful. Um, but it's very expensive. And so um, keeping that in mind, um, we took uh, and put in this budget $600,000 to supplement that capital project, just so that there's a line item in there in case they try to take the funding. Um, because then they'll see that you've got it and that it, it, you know, they won't be, they won't take ours, so to speak. So it doesn't mean we're going to use the 600,000 for that. Um, or use it at all, but it's it's on the budget just in case. That's correct, and uh, and that's what we wanted to sh make sure we could show. Um, so when you look at the federal reserves, um, we were at on June thirtieth, two thousand twenty-two. We were at one million one fifteen seven twenty-one. Um, last year we spent down fifty thousand two seventy-nine of that to bring our reserves to one thousand one million sixty-five thousand. 442 to be uh, actually what our reserves were June 30th of 2023. The proposed budget that you're voting on today would spend 763,472 of those reserves. And again, primarily is at 600,000 is the project. 
uh, bringing our reserves down to 301,970. 301,970 would not would bring us below the maximum threshold that Congress would possibly say they're going to recoup. So again, like Kara said, it doesn't mean we're going to spend it. It just means it's a plan that if they try to, we can then say we're putting it into the project. Um, our section eight reserves are fine. Our budget internally on that. And it's not that when I say it's internal budgets, they're internal budgets because they're not anything that go to get approved by an outside agency. Um, section eight operates based upon the revenue that we produce by the admin fees. Um, I, the budget currently is estimated to be a surplus of 62,747. Um, our other special projects, again, I mentioned that earlier, there's only estimated income uh, and our use of um, the management accounts. Management accounts, so that's the revenue we get from Hampshire Regional and East Hampton, pretty much as an inflow and outflow. Uh, the income that comes in from that is being spent and allocated by our expenses. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's a very balanced budget um, that covers all the programs. I guess uh, the next thing, Carol, would be to take any specific questions that anyone might have. Yes, and um, Madam Chair, after you do that, um, if you just remember that I need to read the resolution for um, the, the <clears throat> uh, sake of the laws around each program. Yes, I understand. So Commissioner Tarbutton has her hand raised, so I'll go first. Please, Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I have to apologize on level. I My apartment's been affected with bed bugs, and I had COVID, so I'm not at my regular computer, which is a little larger, and I'm having a hard time seeing everything here. So um, it's been quite a journey here. But uh, what I would like to see, and the only thing I can see it through is my phone, uh, if you could tell me on each property uh, the training of professional development, is it all together? I, I can't see it now. I did get over it. And I want to always ask if staff could send me a hard copy of this to inner office mail. Uh, you never know what happens. So I'd like to have that in addition to the computer. But uh, I read somewhere where it said $800 for professional development. And I did see something for training conferences. And I want to get that straight because I just want to tell you $800, it would get me at the conference, but it wouldn't take care of my lodging. So, and is that just for one building? Because if that's professional development, are you talking about the board? Are you talking about staff? Uh, I'd like to have some clarity on that. And uh, also I'd like to thank um, uh, Gary DePace. I've been saying Le Pace all these <laughs> times for uh, the training that you provided, very helpful. You can never get enough training. And I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to deal with that. I apologize for how it went left and right and left and right. And uh, I just remember, I, I, I guess I want to thank you because on one level you said, I need at least until October 26. You know, and I was like, okay, I get what you're saying. And I agreed with that because you, you know, all this stuff was going on. So <clears throat> I think it's pretty amazing that you did this on the second. I know that that's what was... Uh, wanted to be held on it. So I, uh, I appreciate all of this. And again, with the uh, going over everything, I think it was very helpful. I wish we had a finance committee, like it says in the bylaws, so we could go over this stuff. So it doesn't seem like we have to do special stuff, that this is the norm. So back to the question, can you tell me what is going into professional development for a board? So the what's, line, what's, the line item. Oh, is, go ahead, Carrie. Yes. Yeah, the line the line item for training is for training for board staff. It's it's all encompassing. It's not just for one or the other. Um, and I want to say it, uh, Gary. Correct me if I weren't if I'm wrong. I think it was twelve thousand dollars total. But you're, um, Commissioner Tarbutt and Springfield. You're actually looking at. Um, uh, four different budgets um, because we, we have uh, many different programs. And so um, if you're seeing one that says 800, that's just that program's portion of the grand total. Yeah, I, I think I think what you're seeing, Kara, is what she's seeing is 
the portion that's the travel reimbursement yeah. for that because yeah. so, uh, so conference yeah. and registrations are out of two different accounts. Yeah. And, and we actually have training conference fees re budgeted at 23500 yeah. Um And again, and so I think it's that, is, that is so that, um, and, and don't forget, Commissioner Tarbot in Springfield is, um, there was a motion a while back um, that we need to do a policy on that too. I just, I don't want you to think that just because it's in the budget, I didn't want you to get jammed up. So um, uh, just got to remember that we've got to do it in advance is all. Uh, it's, excuse oh. me, I'm sorry. I didn't I understand that. I'm sorry, guys. Really, I am not on my game. It's okay. Uh, you apologize for what? <clears throat> because so, when I did go to the one conference, when I did my training, I did a training with uh, Jeff Driscoll for almost a year, every Saturday to get my NARO certification. So when I knew about that two months earlier, I sent it to you. So it wasn't after the fact that I go, oh, pay for it. I did you as he su suggested that I do. So I really want to get that straight that it's not like I came after the fact. But I want to just say, guys, being the only resident board member commissioner who had to pay their own way, it's not a good look. And so I think that, as Jeff Driscoll said, in our training, in addition to what DACD's we need training. We need training all the time. And I know we did a DIE for staff for the board. So let's just keep that up. And I just want to be encouraging because I am seeing uh, people, board members, one or, two, one or two, who are going out that. I used to send stuff all the time and I stopped doing that because I was sending things that were going on. And they would come back like, oh, we can't afford that. That's not it. But I do appreciate, I think, uh, so another speaker, uh, the commissioner said, the fact that people are making an effort with that, I think it's just the beginning. And I would hope not one a year uh, is suffice to say you've done that. I think it's ongoing. I spent about 30 hours just for this committee. And this is not board. This is not the only board that I'm on. So, um, so thank you, you for that. that. Okay. No, there's more, I think. Do you have further questions, Commissioner Tarbotton? Uh, no, I'm just trying to get everything done here. Okay. What did I do? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone else have a question for Mr. DePace or for... Are there any other questions from board members? Well, I know our process will be, there will be, um, the resolution will, it, it will need a motion and a second. So I guess it, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and make the motion now. If there is someone who would like to make the motion, if you could read the resolution, we'll see who will... Move that, please. Sure. Can you read that? Am I waiting for the mo uh, for the motion? I'm or... going to have you read the, re the uh, resolution, the and resolution. hopefully somebody will say, so moved. And okay. then somebody else will say, right. second. And then I'll tell everybody to start talking about it. All right, thank you. Resolution 2023-09, which is approval of the FY24 budget for all programs. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority wishes to submit budgets as presented by a fee accountant, Gary DePace, and as indicated below for each program, the annual operating budget for state-aided program 400C for fiscal year 24, the proposed operating budget for state-aided family and elderly housing of the Northampton Housing Authority, which is chapters 200, 667, and 705, and program number 400C for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024, showing a total revenue of $3,667,998 and a total of operating expenditures of $639,556, thereby requesting a subsidy of $1,489,918 be submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development for its review and approval. Annual Operating Budget for State Aided Program 689C for Fiscal Year 24. The proposed operating budget for the State Aided Family Housing of the Northampton Housing Authority Program Number 689C for Fiscal Year Ending June 30th, 2024, showing a total revenue of $100,190 and a total operating expenditures of 109113 thereby requesting a subsidy of zero be submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development for its review and approval. 
annual operating budget for state aided MRVP program for fiscal year 24. The proposed operating budget for state aided family housing for the Northampton Housing Authority MRVP <laughs> program for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024, showing total revenue of $89,015 and a total operating expenditures of $90,305, thereby, thereby requesting a subsidy of zero will be submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development for its review and approval. Annual operating budget for federal programs fiscal year 24. Submit revision one of the uh, current approved federal fiscal year 24 budget. Modifications have been made since the budget guidelines came out from, D from EHLOC for the state budgets, which caused revisions to the federal budget. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners for the Northampton Housing Authority does hereby approve the 401 689 MRVP and federal budget revision one for fiscal year 24 and further that the executive director's total annual salary of 198,371, which includes $32,746 in management fee from the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority and East Hampton Housing Authority's management contracts. Further, that the authority and the executive director in their name shall be authorized on and after the passing of this resolution to do and perform on behalf of the authority, all acts and the things required of the authority to perform fully all obligations of the budget, including electronic signatures on required forms, and be it resolved that the resolution shall take effect immediately. You're, you're muted, uh, Madam Chair. May I please have a motion to approve from the floor? Motion to approve. Thank you. How about a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, moved Commissioner Brooks and seconded Commissioner Richards to approve the res stated resolution. And now I'll ask if there anyone else with okay, any more discussion? Yes, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yeah, as again, I don't have it all in front of me. And I think I asked in that meeting if I could have these things sent to me by inner office mail. So I haven't gotten that. So I do have to apologize, but one of the questions that I would ask, I had asked a question, I wanna see with the upcoming fiscal year, um, residents who are getting paid or deductions from the rent, I don't understand how you reconcile that. And I wanna see what line item that goes into. So I haven't gotten that and I would appreciate that information. Um, okay. Commissioner Tarbutt in Springfield, that's operations, and additionally, it just it goes into specific residents, which I can't discuss with the board. Um, so um, I I can't get into that with you with any of you. Um, I'm I'm sorry, and I tried to explain that to you at the budget training, but it just it doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. What did you say? I'm sorry. What 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 happened? Um, I'm you're not, cutting up your voice. It's a little slow. I'm not a. I'm not allowed to get into specific things with commissioners. Um, I know specifically resident information. Um, and or operations, and that falls under both of those categories. So I'm sorry. I cannot discuss a specific resident or what they are getting or not getting okay. uh, with you. So you, that's under operations. I do also want to say, wow, the salaries. Wow, it almost looks like this is a, you know, 300, 300 uh, staff for uh, salaries and benefits that go on there. I, I just would like to say, if you can't discuss that, that's fine. I just would like there's some equity or if there was a financial committee, we could look into it without the specifics. Why is some getting paid and others who are doing pretty much the same work? And if it's operations, um, I've never seen a breakdown of it, and I don't need to know who or why. I'm just asking this question. And so um, I'll take it that I don't get uh, an answer, except we can't give it to you. So thank you. Okay. Oh, and yes, Commissioner Cantel. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't have a problem with this. Um, I don't think we need to share people's personal information or names, but I think it's a very valid question to ask what line item this where 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 this light item uh, lies and and where how is it reflected? We don't need to know people's specific 
uh, name, uh, um, I think what she's asking about is, where does that reflect? How does that work? So it, how it works is it's part of the overall budget and what she's asking and she said it at multiple other meetings is that um, Angela Santanello, who she has brought up at other meetings is on the neighborhood watch and it, she says is getting a stipend and that she's doing the same things that Angela Santanello was doing and wanted to know why she wasn't getting a stipend. That's what she said um, prior, and that's um, and, and and so um, it, it's it's actually in the line item of um, shelter rents thirty one ten. I actually didn't say that, Kara. If I could clarify, I um, you said I, I just said neighborhood watch was getting a stipend. No, and the, no, no, no. Uh, no, no. Let's not. Me... I'm going to interrupt for a second. Okay. It doesn't matter. The, I think the question by Commissioner Cancel was asking a question. Has your question been asked and answered, Commissioner Cancel, or is there for other questions? Um, it it was answered at the end, I believe. Shelter rents were line item which thirty one ten. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now I'm not going to have. I already no. I think I'm going to go, uh, let's say, uh, now, Commissioner Cancel lowered his hand. Commissioner Tarbutton, do you have another question regarding the, are you going to, not question, do you have more to um, discuss before we move on with this motion? Yeah, I just, <clears throat> I don't know how it goes. If you do everybody's rent, and how do you say all these are truth and reflection of what the rents are per certification, blah, da, 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 da. Do you put a note and also including the hundred dollar off a month? And I didn't know that happened. The tenant told me and put their hand over their mouth. So I didn't know this was going on. If I wasn't on board. I wouldn't be asking that. So I wasn't asking for myself. There are other people in the neighborhood watch who do a whole lot more than I do. And they didn't know there was pay. So I don't get that. Like, And I know that that happened some while back when there were a bunch of residents who were cleaning the building and and I remember somebody really upset about that. And so it was discontinued. So, but it discontinued, but it seems like uh, one person or one particular person is getting uh, those funds. So I just want to know where it goes and uh, line items. So thank 30, you for 30, allowing 30. me to speak. Okay. I think if that's been answered then, did you say that it's in that, in that line? 3110. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll ask if there's anyone else. Then I'll, I, I will ask then if we can um, call the question or move the question. And if that's the case, I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes. Um, you don't need to read the resolution again, I don't think. <laughs> it's very long. I think you can just. <laughs> resolution 202309, which is approval of the FY24 budget for all pro programs. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Ken Sell. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Uh, I'm going to abstain, but what a wonderful job Gary DePace did on all levels. It's just uh, some questions that I'm not comfortable with, so I'll abstain. I'm sure it will pass, but that's my vote. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, uh, with five yeas and one abstention. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. As you know, this is the only item on the agenda for the special meeting, but I'll be seeing you all October 16th. Is that the date for our regular October meeting? Um, I think so. I'll have to check. Okay. I hate that okay. residents. Third Monday, right? Is it? Yes. Well, I, I don't know the date off the top of my head, but... 16th um, is Okay, yeah, well, I'll, Okay, well, I look forward to seeing you all then. You need one more motion. Oh, yeah. Somebody want to help me out there? Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> all right. Non-debatable. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>